Good morning and Merry Christmas. I'm glad that you have joined us for worship as we come together in this Christmas season. I want to invite you as we begin to share this video on your Facebook page so that others can join us in our worship this morning and throughout the rest of this week. I hope that you had a safe and wonderful time celebrating at home or with your pod, and I'm glad that we can be together again today. And so now, as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, I invite you to join me in prayer. God with us, we give you thanks on this day for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, for the celebrations that we have had and will continue to have as we seek to align our lives with the King of Peace with the one who has come. And so now in this time, God, bless our worship together. May it glorify you and may it build us up to be the body of Christ in the world. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Please join us in our opening hymn, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. You'll be able to find the lyrics at the bottom of your screen. Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give ye heed to what we say. News, news, Jesus Christ is born today. Ox and ass before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye hear of endless bliss, news, news. Jesus Christ was born for this. He hath opened heaven's door, and ye are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye need not fear the grave. News, news, Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain his everlasting hall. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. Well, hey, kids at Glen and kids at heart. I've got a question for you today. Have, has anyone ever promised you something so big, really big, so big that you had trouble believing it? Sometimes a promise is small, like maybe your parents promised that if you eat your vegetables, then you can have dessert afterwards. But sometimes a promise can be enormous. Like maybe, maybe someone comes to you and says, hey, I promise I'm going to give you a million dollars. Or someone says, I promise that I'm going to give you your own live pony in your yard. You might be thinking to yourself, well, that's nice of them to say, but it's, it's probably not going to happen, right? It's just hard to trust in a promise that big sometimes. Well, in our Bible story today, there are two people, Anna and Simeon, who got a really, really big promise from God. People have been waiting and waiting a long, long time to see Jesus be born. So long that a lot of people grew old and passed away, and then even their kids grew old and passed away. But God had made a promise to Simeon that things would be different for him. God had promised that he would actually live to see Jesus born in his lifetime. And now remember, Simeon didn't know anything about the angel that had spoken to Mary or the manger or the camels or the wise men like we know now. So he might have been thinking, yeah, right, I'll believe it when I see it. But he decided to listen to God. And do you know what he found out? He went to the temple like God asks, and he sees Jesus. And he found out that God keeps God's promises. 
Simeon and Anna were both two people that believed in this big, big promise from God, even when it seemed too big to be true. And what they learned is that God keeps God's promises, which is the best news in the whole world. Hallelujah. Go tell it on the mountain. God keeps God's promises. Hear these words from the gospel according to Luke. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about them. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At the moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem, When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. May God bless the reading of the word. Anyone remember back in August during our sermon series on numbers in the Bible, where I had fun sharing about the many ways the number 40 is used throughout scriptures? Well, guess what? It's now been just about 40 weeks since our American pandemic due to COVID-19 began. And if Mary would have gone full term with baby Jesus, he would have just been born after 40 weeks of pregnancy. And like many new parents who find themselves exhausted, overwhelmed, and a wreck both physically and emotionally, I imagine young Mary found herself looking down at the sweet baby in her arms and the unsanitary delivery room of the stable around her and thought, now what? Strange, smelly men and their sheep kept stopping by and wanting to gawk at the baby. And I'm telling you, I'm not too far removed from the birth of my own children to let you know that the last thing that a new mom wants or needs is strangers stopping by for a visit. I don't care if they say angels sent them or not, but I digress. According to the story that we piece together in the Gospels and from Jewish traditions of that time, more than a month passes and Jesus is 40 days old. If you've had a newborn at home, you know this is about the time that both the adrenaline and newness of a newborn wears off and the sleep deprivation and exhaustion sets in. In those ancient days, the devastating truth that it was in these early weeks that if a newborn wasn't able to get enough nutrition without all of our wonderful modern medicine and lactation consultants and the invention of infant formula, back then the child usually didn't even make it. The infant mortality rates in Jesus's day were all but astronomical. His conception and birth were miracles, of course, but so was his surviving and thriving infancy. And so, as faithful Jewish parents, where do Mary and Joseph now take their little bundle of joy wrapped in swaddling clothes at 40 days old? 
up to the temple in Jerusalem, which ostensibly was only a few miles from where they were staying by that time. The laws of Leviticus required that 40 days after giving birth to a son, a mother is required to present a purification offering at the temple. We'll save the discussion about the patriarchal purification offering for another time. But whether faithfully or defiantly, Mary goes to bring her offering of two small turtle doves, which lets us know if we had any doubts about their financial standing as a young couple, that the Holy Family could not afford a ram, but instead opted for the more economical offering of two turtle doves. I bet you haven't always been thinking about purification sacrifices when you sang the catchy line about two turtle doves in the 12 days of Christmas Carol. You're welcome. Perhaps a more comforting meaning of the two turtle doves we can remember from the movie Home Alone 2, the pigeon lady in Central Park who tells young Kevin McAllister, turtle doves are a symbol of friendship and love. Keep one and give the other to a very special person. As long as you each have your, your turtle dove, you will be friends forever. Friends forever is an overused adage that can bring us hope when thinking about Mary's probable question, what next, as she presented herself, her meager offering of two turtle doves and her firstborn son to the priest. Maybe it's a bit trite, but as we wrap up these 40 weeks of a global pandemic and one of the most difficult years of most of our lives, as families and communities and routines and securities of what normal life used to be have been completely disrupted, I think I'll cling to this good news that Jesus is the promised Messiah, a friend forever, if you will, the world all needs. Enter stage left, Simeon, and stage right, Anna. Often overlooked biblical characters, these elderly residents of the synagogue had been waiting and praying and hoping for a Messiah for decades, not just 40 weeks. Their lives, communities, families, routines, and securities of what normal life used to be had been completely disrupted as they waited and worshiped in the synagogue for years upon years, clinging to the hope of the good news of a promised Messiah, a friend forever, if you will, the world needed back then too. And then he arrives, this 40 day old baby whom shepherds strangely came to pay homage in his makeshift delivery room. And unbeknownst to Mary and Joseph, Wise magi from the east were still stargazing as they traveled many months to find him in the days ahead. When I think of this story, I cannot help but think about the dark nights lit only by stars and the soft glow of a nightlight as I spent hours rocking and feeding babies with prayers and quiet begging for sleep to come, for protection of their tiny fragile bodies but even more, the indescribable mother's wordless hopes and dreams and fears all mingled together in those sleepless nights as tears and lullabies begged the world to be a kinder place for this child, hoping and praying for sleep to come peacefully and to wake up in a world better than the way we found it. I can imagine the look of perplexity and the sigh of wonder Mary must have exhaled as Simeon and then Anna proclaimed the majesty of the child in her arms. Perhaps Anna embraced the young mother, gently squishing the chubby baby between them and whispered in her ear, you're doing a great job, mama. And while we as United Methodists don't quite put Mary on the pedestal of divinity as some of our other Christian siblings, one can't help but acknowledge a mother's intuition. Mary knew as she looked down at this child whom angels and shepherds and now a strange priest and prophetess adored was somehow more than just her baby. The baby is here, now what? The Messiah is here, now what? Well, the scriptures tell us the now what. Mary and Joseph finished everything required by the law of the Lord. They returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. 
And so this Christmas of 2020, where we are as weary and perplexed as young Mary and Joseph must have been, we have told and retold the stories of the angels, the shepherds, the stable, the baby, these lesser known stories of Simeon and Anna, and even make ourselves revisit the horrors of King Herod's evil plots to not turn away our eyes from the history of grieving mothers and lamenting fathers, of refugees like Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus escaping the wrath of power and politics. We tell the stories to the babies in our arms and prayers and quiet begging for sleep to come, for protection for their tiny, fragile bodies, but even more, the indescribable, wordless hopes and dreams and fears all mingled together, begging the world to be a kinder place for every child. The baby is here, now what? The Messiah is here, now what? Perhaps we whisper to the cashier behind her mask, you're doing a great job. We recommit to advocacy work for children of God of all ages, whose fragile bodies and hearts are victims of our systems of injustice and racism and power that makes the rich richer and the poor poorer. The baby is here, now what? The Messiah is here, now what? May the boldness of the angels embolden us to take a stand for the peaceful transitions of power. May the curiosity of the shepherds inspire us to seek God in the least expected places and to find God in the least expected people. May the patience and persevering hope of Anna and Simeon encourage us to not give up hope that God continues to fulfill promises and prophecies. And because of our hope and promise in this Messiah, just as Simeon and Anna witnessed and proclaimed, we too are together called to finish everything required by the law of the Lord, where we seek to grow and become strong, we seek to be filled with wisdom, and we seek the favor of God, just as Christ embodied in the flesh. The baby is here. Now what? Will you join me as we affirm our faith together? We believe in God, the creator and giver of life, who brought all creation to birth, who mothers us and fathers us, protecting, nurturing, and cherishing us. We believe in Jesus Christ, God born among us as a fragile baby, embodying both love and the need for love and calling us to rest in God as trustingly as a tiny child. We believe in the Holy Spirit, breathe into us at our birth, always drawing us on to be born again, encouraging, exhorting, comforting, nourishing our growth and inspiring our living. We believe in the reconciliation of the world to God through Christ. Hunted at birth and humiliated at death, Christ entered our fearful darkness so that we might enter his glorious light and share the life of his resurrection. And we believe that each new child is a glimpse of the face of God, a sign of the life to come, and a call to live in peace and celebrate living together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Amen. Here we are, December 27th, the last Sunday of the year, and we come to our time of offering. Are you up to date? Have you done what you set out to do in December? Can you make an additional gift before this year ends? December is always a critical time for the church in offerings, and you can be a help in that and support the work of this church and make for a, a strong beginning for 2021. Now, as we uh, receive the offering today and as we consider the offering, as we uh, perhaps go online to make our offering, uh, we're going to finish up Christmas with a little more singing. So we're going to enjoy a, a sort of medley of, of Christmas carols here together. And, you know, here's the great thing about online worship. We're at home. Nobody else can hear us. So you can sing with all the energy and joy you wish. Enjoy. Angels from the realms of glory. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, we have stepped away from our Christmas trees and our gifts and all of the joy of that day. And we have gathered together here this morning. We continue in the good news with Mary we ponder the message of the shepherds and their story of angels and good news of great joy for all people. O oh Lord, by your Spirit, help us to comprehend the heights and the depths and the breadth and the lengths of that good news for us and for all the world. Help us, O oh God, to comprehend what it means that you have come into our midst in Jesus Christ to offer life in all abundance. We ponder with Mary the good news. And with the shepherds, with the shepherds, we look upon the great sign of your love for the world. The baby, born of Mary. The baby who changes everything who brings into our world your truth and life in flesh and blood, who offers to all he meets your grace and hope, who speaks 
your truth to the powers of this world and shakes the foundations of the earth. Oh, Lord, our God, we, we hear the witness of the shepherds and we see the sign promised to them and we hear the babies cry. We travel with that holy family to Jerusalem and hear there the, the words of Simeon and Anna. Oh Lord, your good news was expected and awaited by faithful of this world. And so, oh God, we, we hear with them the fulfillment of your promise that in Christ all things are made new, that in Him a new way has come into this world. And now, O oh Lord, we will spend the weeks and the months ahead pondering that good news and seeking to make it real in our lives. O oh Lord, our God, Grant us a moment of stillness in your presence that we might hear anew the good news and walk in it all the days of our lives. And now, O oh Lord, we pause and we join our voices in prayer and we remember that Jesus Christ himself taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join us in our closing hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain.
May the patience and persevering hope of Anna and Simeon encourage us to not give up hope that God continues to fulfill promises and prophecies. And because of our hope and promise in this Messiah, just as Simeon and Anna witnessed and proclaimed, we too are together called to finish everything required by the law of the Lord, where we seek to become strong, we seek to be filled with wisdom, and we seek the favor of God, just as Christ embodied in the flesh. The baby is here. Now what?